Cabinet has decided on the recommendation of the Director General to move Auckland to Orange at 11.59 pm on Thursday the 30th of December. Cabinet has also decided that those remaining areas that are currently in red, excluding Northland, will also move to Orange at 11.59 pm on Thursday the 30th of December. Cabinet considered several factors when deciding whether or not to move regions into different levels in the traffic light system, including vaccination rates, health system capacity, and the status of the current outbreak. It is encouraging to see Auckland's case numbers have continued to decline since the new framework came into effect, giving cause for cautious optimism. The seven-day average number of cases in Auckland as of Friday was 113 a day, compared to 126 the week prior and 179 the week prior to that, all lower than the 200 cases a day that modelling suggested in early November. This lower number of cases in Auckland is good news for all of us as it reduces the risk of the virus spreading outside Auckland once the boundary changes on Wednesday. We currently have 61 people in hospital, four of those in ICU or high dependent, the high dependency unit. Case numbers, new hospitalisations and new cases in ICU are all running slightly under the levels predicted. The R rate, which is indicative of the pace of spread, slowed to under one for the first time in several months on the 1st of December. Over the past two weeks, our vaccination rates in total have increased more than the previous two weeks, and as a country, we are now just 47,527 vaccinations away from hitting 90% fully vaccinated. So as I said last week, we should hit that milestone in the middle of this week. But there are other factors we must also keep in mind. Firstly, that we have long said we want to see good vaccination levels across all parts of the country. Those areas outside of Auckland that are in red, for the most part, won't reach rates in the mid to high 80s till the end of December. Secondly, while Auckland is one of the most highly vaccinated regions, it continues to be the centre of the outbreak, with several hundred active cases obviously being managed. And while there is good cause for optimism, we only moved into the new COVID protection framework just 10 days ago, which doesn't yet represent a full transmission cycle. However, Ministers and the Director-General were supportive of recognising the progress that has been made and will be made in the coming weeks as people seek their second dose. They also expressed a view that with an additional transmission cycle, they believe there will be enough comfort for Auckland to move. This decision means that Auckland will move approximately four weeks after they moved into the COVID protection framework at the beginning of the month and will give extra time for any potential impacts of that move to be seen. This represents two incubation periods of the virus, which we have consistently used to provide confidence around outbreak control throughout the pandemic. It means we can see the impacts of also the Auckland boundary opening. It means that other regions at red, currently Taupo, Rotorua Lakes District, Kaurau, Whakatane, Apotiki Districts, Gisborne District, Wairo District, Rangatike, Whanganui and Ruapehu Districts have an additional period of time for second doses to be administered and rates to reach a greater level of protection. As I said, by this time we expect uh, on projection for those areas to reach mid to high 80s in terms of fully vaccinated uh, um, residents. Here today we have carefully balanced the range of advice, views, risks and opportunities of the all the relevant levels and settled on an outcome that means the country will move into the new year with all but one region in the orange setting. It means vaccine passes will be in use up and down the country, as well as masks and other public health measures that are designed to keep us safe during this time of change. But it does mean that we are also being proportionate and that people will be able to gather together, and that's because it will be safe to do so. I do want to acknowledge the huge work that has been undertaken in Northland and the enormous progress that has been made there too. But I do think it's right to be cautious in this move. This does not move, of course, that people who do not fulfil the requirements in Auckland around either being fully vaccinated or tested cannot move into Northland. Of course, they continue to be able to. Our next full review of the traffic lights will be in the week of the 17th of January. Finally, a word on Omicron. 
Currently, New Zealand maintains a layer of protection at our border through our ongoing use of managed isolation and quarantine. You'll be aware that this is due to undergo a significant change on 17 January when New Zealand residents and citizens in Australia are able to travel home and instead of going into MIQ, will be able to isolate at home for seven days. But in light of the global Omicron situation, Ministers with Pata Act will receive the latest advice from the Ministry of Health on the variant in early January. This check-in will be to confirm that we remain comfortable with this next step in our reconnecting work. I won't preempt the outcome of that check-in now, but it makes sense to ensure we assess the next move against all the latest information and advice we have, including the relative effectiveness of the vaccine against the Omicron variant. One final note. On Wednesday, Aucklanders who are fully vaccinated can travel around the country again. And the boundary that has played an extraordinary role in containing the Delta outbreak for the past four months changes. Those who are unvaccinated can travel too, but must provide a negative test taken within the previous 72 hours. We announced last week, but I'm confirming again today, that that test can be a rapid antigen test and that they will be available at the 149 pharmacies around Auckland from Wednesday. They will also be available at other pharmacies around New Zealand from Wednesday also. The results are available after 15 minutes and you'll be issued with proof of your test for travel across the border. Please, I encourage you to use this simple accessible option for surveillance testing if you are not vaccinated and intend to travel uh, and you are in Auckland. But if you are symptomatic, still please get a full PCR test. Some will ultimately say this decision today feels right. Some will say it feels too slow, others too fast. So instead I come back to the two year perspective. For the second year in a row now, we finish the year with measures that matter, the lowest cases, hospitalisations and deaths in the OECD and an opportunity to have a summer break with comparatively low rates of COVID-19.